But Command's ability, able to start ramping up the damage and maybe start stretching for maybe larger HP Pokemon. Fabian's gonna have to try and got his work cut out for him, I should say, because he does start off the game with a lot of lower HP Pokemon, and that's where Scott can try and capitalize. It's not just at the start, a lot of those will be sticking around for the rest of the game. So, um, with the counter catchers being in high counts in Iron Hand's deck, if it ever gets behind, it can start to come back and take a lot of prize cards. Um, and, and of course, the, um, the tools being a massive part of both decks. And I think that's something to look out for is the battle of the tools and whether a, a town store comes into play because uh, it could help out both sides. Yeah, it's really interesting now. We do get a glimpse of the prizes here. Nothing too crazy on Scott's side. Just the one curlier on Fabian. That scream tail as well. But I think we're going to get hopefully a good game here with nothing too crazy prized on both sides of the board. Oh, I love the, the poker gear there. The heart gold, soft silver. Yeah. I think so. That's a, that's a lovely artwork from back in the day. That's one of the beautiful things uh, we have at these events. Everyone choosing their own style, picking their favorite artworks of all the cards. And now we'll see whether Fabian. Fabian does not look confident with the Iron Hands matchup. There's the fist bump. We do have now us kicking us off. It looks like Scott will be starting things off here with the top deck. The top deck, the top card draw. As he does double check. Oh, Klecky's. the clicky. Yeah. Oh, my, I, I was I was <laughs> speaking to uh, Ethan and he was talking me through the guard of our deck and he was saying the clef key is an amazing start for this particular matchup. You know why? Go on, you enlighten me. So the clef key turns off the iron crown, so it means that it, the Maridon doesn't get an early knockout because it takes away that damage increase for the Maridon's first attack. And so consequently, they have to go through two Moradon attacks or then use an Iron Crowns to finish off an already damaged attacker. Yeah, great insight there. Thank you very much. I had the pleasure of playing against a little bit of uh, a similar archetype um, yesterday or sort of the day before just to kind of get myself in the mood to seeing how God of Oz plays out nowadays because everything's changed for it, of course. It's one of those decks that has been impacted by rotation. As we do see Scott here, just kicking things off, does get the Iron Hands EX on the board with an NG attachment. And sometimes that's just all you really need for turn one. Exactly. And, uh, you know, the, the Guard of War deck has changed in the sense that it's now more disruptive than ever. Uh, before, you could set up multiple attackers and your disruption was purely on hand. You could use the Iron Ode to disrupt their hand. And then outside of that, you would attack with uh, some of the strongest attacks in the game. Whereas now you've got things like Klefki, Fluttermane, Mimikyu to try and uh, counter specific archetypes. And with this matchup, the Mimikyu can be good there mm -hmm. to take away the Iron Hand's potential attacks. And then the Klefki, as we mentioned, to reduce the Moridon's damage. Yeah, just those opportunities whilst utilizing some of those sort of more disruptive Pokemon in the active spot. So, of course, with Klefki being able to use Mischievous Lock in the active spot, basic Pokemon in play do not have any abilities except Klefki's Mischievous Lock. With Fluttermane in the active spot, there's an opportunity to try and slow down the abilities of the opponent's active uh, Pokemon as well. And then it's just utilizing some of those TM evolution cards and maybe start building up your board whilst you're gaining additional turns where you can. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the whole plan with the Klefki. Gain a few additional turns. Uh, and if you can, you're in a very strong spot to trade well mm -hmm. into the Iron Hands. Iron Hands are going to take two prizes every turn. And if you're knocking them back out, you'll be doing the same thing. And there we are. There's the instant attachment of the TM machine. Evolution. Those two routes are going straight up to Curlia's with that fantastic refinement ability. And it's back over to Scott here uh, once... Fabian just quickly finishes up his shuffle, and of course the TM Evolution will be discarded. Yeah, there's not much needed to get this deck going for Scott. The Arvin will find uh, the Techno Raider and the Future Booster Energy Capsule, which can allow you to get that Maridon attack off. As long as there's an energy in hand, and I assume Scott would have one as he's already attached for turn, so it's likely to be holding on to one here. Yeah, and if, if Scott's able to sort of progress and get these energies attached to the Iron Hands EX as soon as possible, it starts to put Fabian on a bit of a clock. You know, it's then just saying, well, I'm going to be taking two prize knockouts every turn if you can't deal with this Iron Hands EX in the active spot. And I'm also just going to be powering up and giving it a boost in damage as well as a heavy baton. Oh, no, it's not, sorry, it's the future booster capsule um, that's been selected there with the... <laughs> 
with the, <laughs> the oven there. Yeah, by the oven, sorry. Yeah, so it's interesting. There was no energy left in Scott's hand. So I'm wondering now whether that means that uh, he's going to just try and power up an iron hand and swing with that. Um, but yeah, the, the hand is looking quite small. There's the electric generator. Big. First two cars, three, four. Oh, no, no energy there. Considering really only one energy is on the field of play right now. Bit of a miss there from Scott. I mean, is there some tough prizes? I'm not sure if uh, Scott's playing around particularly challenging start here, maybe just miss sequence, but for Fabian, this is the dream scenario. And if there was a Maridon prize, then the heavy ball would do exactly what they need. No, I don't believe there was one. No targets available there for Scott, oh but does get a chance to double check. Yeah, I think maybe that attachment onto the iron hands was just the, the early uh, struggle there. And that's gonna be a pass and with very little energy on board, Iron Crown in the active spot. This is now a chance for Fabian to start accelerating ahead. Yeah, a chance to capitalize on that slow start from Scott. Refinements there, already it utilized. N not able to use concealed cars. I don't think there's a psychic energy in hand. It's a bit of a shame. But God of our EX evolved up now. Retreat into the God of our EX. Capable of using psychic embrace. We've seen it many times before now. As often as you like attaching a psychic energy from your discard pile, you do deal two damage counters on yourself for each energy, and it's going to be start swinging away on the Iron Crown EX. 190 damage, Miracle Force. Top deck time now for Scott. What are they going to draw? Or oh, is that just a future booster energy capsule? And that's not what you need right now. Need a little bit more. Oh, oh there's the Iron in hand. <laughs> does have a way out. Does have a way to try and just... Get out of this potentially. Let's see what we can do work with here, Scott. Oh, this is going to be one energy in hand. Can't quite notice what else there is going on. Oh, these slow starts are one of the challenges for decks like Iron Hands. Just a promotion of the other Iron Crown EX, just to try and soak up some damage here. Not ideal. <laughs> Not ideal at all, is that God of our gets another opportunity. There's the concealed cards, a fantastic card we've seen already throughout today. I mean, with the, the God of War EX, if Scott were to attack into the God of War EX, then the Professor Turo scenario could be used to pick it up and promote the next God mm -hmm. of War EX. And so you would be able to just chain that one particular attacker that can survive any attack of the Iron Hands deck. Yeah, as Fabian does. Just use Buddy Buddy Poffin to get out another route here. Just continuing to set up the board, prepare for any sort of actions from Scott's side following that Iono and just the energy attachment. Iono of his own. I mean, this is the, the challenge when you don't get that Maraidon attack off at the start. You don't have that single prizer that you can just keep accelerating with. That If your opponent takes, you're not too fussed because then you just play two prizes for the rest of the game. So Scott now just trying to slowly power up the Iron Hands and maybe get a knockout with it on something smaller than the God of War X, but that again is asking quite a lot. With no uh, knockouts being taken by Fabian, that means the counter catches aren't live. That God of War right now on 250 HP could theoretically be within range of something like the arm press with some additional more damage modifiers in the deck as well. But if Fabian just sort of keeps swinging away at this Iron Crown EX, there's ways for Fabian to maybe just utilize some of his damage counter drop attacks, like from that Mimikyu, for example. Yeah, and just finish off multiple uh, Pokemon at the same time. Yeah, that Ghost Eye attack where you can put seven damage counters. Oh, it's on your actors, apologies. But you've also got Flutter like, Main, 90 and 20 onto the bench. Scream Tail here, we're gonna see some um, swinging away, sniping onto the bench, or very likely. Okay, just taking away that Iron Crown, that's gonna make it even harder to knock out something like the Guard of X, but it does leave a one prize in the active. So now if Scott starts taking knockouts mm -hmm. and Fabian can return those knockouts, Fabian is on the first of the 2-2-2 race that we're likely to see here. Um, and without much energy in play, it's gonna be much harder for Scott to chain those attacks. I'm not too sure what else is going on in Scott's hand at the moment. A Techno Radar being played. Looks like a discard of a Lightning Energy. Opportunity to grab some further future Pokemon. I mean, coming into this, I thought this was heavily in favor of Iron Hands, but you can see the disruptive potential of, of the Gardevoir deck now with the, the Clef Key, with the 
flutter main with the Mimikyu, it really forces some unusual routes. Uh, and, and you forget how big Gardevoir EX mm -hmm. is. In a lot of matches, that's your liability. But in this particular match, it's a, it's a Pokemon that's really hard to knock out. Yeah, 100%. And even with the sort of six damage counters on it, from that Psychic Embrace, it's still a real big stretch to hit to 250. I mean, considering it's 160 base for the arm press, additional 20 damage for each of the Iron Crown EXs from that Cobalt Command. As we do see a Maridon come down here, is there a way to switch out of the active spot here? Otherwise, we're going to see that Screamtail continue to just keep swinging away. Research in hand. Oh, going to have to try and find a future booster energy capsule. And uh, the one question with the Iron Hands is always about which ace spec does it play? And I think for many people, uh, it started off as the obvious choice was the reboot pod, but then Prime Catcher started to become more popular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you just want to be targeting down sort of those lower HP Pokemon. Easier to take out, um, to take two prizes or maybe even stretch sometimes with something like Aluminium V, for example. Something weak to Lightning. Um, and this is where the Electric Generator has hit, does have it now powered up and ready to go. It's just about whether Scott can find a way to remove the Iron Crown EX from the active position so that he can start just applying some pressure on Fabian's board. I think we saw the Prime Catcher, so that would be a way to oh, switch okay. it. Um, and then I think the real question here is, do you have that heavy baton to be able to retain the energy? So we'll see there. The Prime Catcher comes down. Which target would you like to go for here? That is always the question. Yep. And it will be that Curlia, such an important part of the draw engine of Gardevoir. Yeah, just kind of removing the opportunity for Fabian to keep drawing. Does have the routes ready as well. And there's the announcement of the... Amp you very much for two prizes there from Scott. So leveling the game, as it were, as the God of Art EX is promoted to the active spot. Does have an energy already attached to it. So can just maneuver through an attachment and or, or with Psychic Embrace before moving to the right attacker of choice. There we see the Drifloon, mm -hmm. the new high damage output attacker for God of War. Previously we had um, Zacian V and the Gardevoir with Shiny Arcana mm -hmm. ability. Yep. Those were both great attackers in this deck, but after losing them, having to find a new way to hit those high damage outputs, Drifloon, with uh, HP increasing tool cards, has filled that gap in Gardevoir. Yeah, Drifloon got a lot of sort of traction early on in sort of some, some Gardevoir lists right at the start before realizing, well, we could just keep using those Gardevoirs to keep drawing cards with Shining Arcana, and Zashin V was a perfect um, sort of closer, as it were, in the deck. But now with Drifloon having to be utilized to deal those real big damage with that fantastic Balloon Blast attack, which is 30 times the number of damage counters on itself. And what's interesting with the new format for Gardevoir is it doesn't need as many energy cards, mm -hmm. uh, where we saw the old Gardevoir list had to really reach to was it like 14 energy cards with like the reversal energies? Yeah, sometimes it so can 13, be. 13, 12. Maybe a little, yeah, it's, it's yeah. a mixture. It's a mixture. I um, mean, now we're down to just nine. And that's plentiful enough for being able to take the right knockouts as we do see a routes come down as well. So not the Drifloon yet. Um, do see the other fantastic A-spec in Fabian's hand as well. That Hero's Cape is just hanging around there. Is that the first time we've seen it on stream today? I would like to believe so. At the I moment. assume so. I haven't quite caught all of the A specs, but we've now seen five different A specs on stream. Heroes Cave Ooh, working really well big. in Guard of War EX and also a great card in Snorlax. But here it's able to increase that Screamtail's damage output, and that will be 120 damage on the Screamtail. So taking that knockout on the active Iron Hands, 240 damage, and we'll be able to. Sit in that active spot. Yeah, massive KO there. And just being able to increase it, well, initially to 190 HP um, to begin with. And then, of course, with the Psychic Embraces, just ramping up that damage counters um, on itself to really ramp up its attack. And it's a great way, great little combo piece. Is now susceptible to things like Lost Vacuum. Though. Very true. Yeah, Lost Vacuum, uh, one of the most powerful cards in the current format. The only way to get rid of tool cards. And so any of these decks that are reliant on tool cards to put them out of range, we see it with the Hero's Cape, we see it with Bravery Charm, we see it with Ancient Booster Energy Capsule. 
And if you're able to remove those whilst you're attacking, you can put stuff that was before out of range now back into range. Yeah, fortunately for Fabian, in this type of deck that Scott is piloting, typically wouldn't run a Lost Vacuum. So we do just see the attachment of the Lightning Energy to the Maridon in the active spot. A fantastic addition to the deck as well. Another opportunity to also disrupt Fabian's hand down to two. Very it's good. It's a pretty good turn so far. Just whether Scott can continue riding out some of those attacks as peak acceleration will be dealing 40, oh, sorry, 80 damage here and taking the knockout and hopefully powering up a, another Iron Hand EX. Yeah, just two cards in hand for Fabian. And that's not going to be a huge amount here to be able to formulate the next attack. You do have the energy acceleration on board, but there is no attacker right now that can um, be used to take out any of the bench Pokemon. That attacker just got removed from play. So we'll have to find a different way, maybe via the Maridon to try and remove it from play and then mm -hmm. get one of those two prizes on the next turn. Yeah, a bit of an important decision here from Fabian. With only two cards in hand following that Iono, it's going to be really important what he's going to be able to promote. What are those two cards? We'll try and figure it out as uh, just a double check of what's going on with the judges. But, you know, this is, it was a good turn from Scott and what you'd expect being able to sort of take the knockout with the Moridon and then be able to power up an Iron Hands EX as well. Yeah, so we'll just make sure this is all good here. Uh, the, amazing, the amazing judges here at EUIC, you know, as these events get bigger, we're having to find more and more people who can judge and so many in the community doing a great job here. And uh, we are blessed with the, the, the table judges and they are just making sure everything's all right. And this is something that a lot of people don't necessarily understand until they mm -hmm. come to an event. The judges aren't there to catch you out. The judges are there to make sure that everything is fine. A lot of time people just ask questions, judge comes yeah. over, everything's fine. So um, it's very rare that there is particularly big issues on the tables. No, and it's, it's a lot of credit to all the volunteers and the judges that sort of help support and run these events as well. Um, it's a massive shout out to just make sure that they can, again, keep on top of things so that we can also have as much information as possible. Um, to share with everyone on home at the stream, or on the stream, sorry. Um, but yeah, we'll just get that all clarified and make sure it's all good before we continue. Um, of course, some of the viewers of the stream itself can also pick some things up, and we're also very thankful to some of those who maybe have seen something and picked some stuff up. And that's on why on rare occasions, we spot them as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, the, judges, the judges tend to be the best bet at spotting everything. And um, this, is, this has turned into quite the interesting End game scenario here, mm -hmm. that Iono down to two was really going to disrupt the Gardevoir because the Curlier was taken yep. out on a previous turn, so there is no draw on board except for the Greninja. Mm -hmm. Not much energy in deck, so you're unlikely to see that. So those three cards that will be seen by Fabian, it's, it's going to have to be very lucky in a way, like really hoping for the, for the best in those final moments. Yeah, it's just whether Fabian's really been able to sort of burst through the deck well enough yet. I feel mm. like there's probably still quite a bit to go through. Um, hasn't seen as much. I mean, did have double curly around um, after turn one. So was able to start utilizing refinement and some of the Greninja draw as well. And that's where you kind of just whistle it down to start setting up your board to the best possible state so that if you do get disrupted or if they do get knocked out or do you have to evolve them up, um, you try and limit what an Iono could do to you. I mean, we saw it in the first game of the stream. Something like Ancient Box, mm -hmm. their way of dealing with Ionos is just to get rid of their whole deck, <laughs> except for what they need, which yeah. they then put back in with the Power Pad and the Super Rod. And Gardevoir used to be so good at doing that, um, uh, setting up the strong board saying, we are back into the game here. They've resolved um, the issue on the table, and it will just be a Greninja. There's an Iono in hand as well, just trying to find a good attacker here to stabilize the board. Yeah, it just was the routes being... Uh, promoted to the active spot. There is a Curlier on board as well. So the refinement looks like it has been used as we've come back to the game. So that's why Fabian does have some additional cards. Arvin being utilized now. And what will Fabian go for? So many different cute little options here in the deck. It's just finding the right one. Yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued as to the, the game plan here. You know, the, the Guard of Warrior X seemed like a really good part of the deck. I mean, there's... Uh, the prize cards right now are in favor of Scott. So Scott is still going to be able to utilize counter catchers, where for Fabian he's not going to be able to. So the Ultra Ball coming out here. And 
I, I mean, this is the, the whole fun of this tournament, is mm -hmm. we're trying to work out how these decks play. So watching some of these best players pilot the, the new way to play God of War, the new way to play uh, Arceus Giratina, mm -hmm. or whatever it is, we're getting to find out how they run now. Yeah, and that's, that's the amazing thing. We get to do this alongside everyone watching the streams at home um, or at this event as well. And it's just so much intrigue in terms of how Fabian could play out to get these final two prizes. He's staring that, um, down at a Maridon in the active spot right now. You know, wants to be trying to take out one of those big hitters on the bench that Scott has. So what's the plan here? And Interesting, he got a bit of time as well. Three prizes remaining for Scott, so there's a little bit of time. And we'll just be retreating into yeah. the routes and using that memory skip. A great attack, but in this scenario, just trying to slow down Scott's board. Little memory skip, I guess, would have chosen peak acceleration as the attack to not be able to be utilized on Scott's turn. But did Fabian just need one more additional turn, maybe just to kind of start getting the board ready I think for so. one big final KO? Seems that way, just need a little bit more processing time just to try and get in the best position possible. That Mew EX, a fun little inclusion into the Iron Hands, wasn't there in the mm -hmm. earliest formation of the decks that we saw, but has been added in as a little bit of an extra draw towards the end of the game. Yeah, what's really cool is even with things like Heavy Baton, so obviously a tool that's utilized with the Iron Hands EX, so if it has a retreat cost of exactly four and knocked out from damage from an opponent's attack, move up to three energies from that Pokemon to one of your bench Pokemon any way you like. That actually opens up um, the Mew EX as a potential attacker as well, which is kind of cute. Um, as we do see, just again, just double checking from both players, making sure they can follow exactly what's going on here. And it looks like it's going to be a Mew restart. Yeah, just discarding with that Techno Radar. Another oh, great part still, still of the, the Mew EX is the synergy that you do have some cards that discard. Maybe he wants to try and find our owner to try and maybe combat some of those combo pieces. Has it picked it up at all? Does have the Arvin, so we'll be able to retreat and formulate an attack here. But then that would leave a two prize in the active. Is this the turn to do it is the question. There's an Arvin being played now. What has Fabian been able to try and navigate in his hand from those that turn that he's just had with the memory skip? This is all kind of the maybe the additional turn Fabian needs to, to build the last combo pieces with a Curlier and the Greninja available to continue going through the deck. Yeah, so if we look at the arm press of that Iron Hands, Iron Hands will be doing uh, 160 plus 20 plus 20, so that's 200. And with a, a future boost to energy capsule, mm -hmm. that would be 220. And that Gardevoir is just out of range uh, with that current damage modification. We'd need another Iron Crown to be able to knock out the Gardevoir X that's currently on board. Yeah, and it would still only be two prize cards. But there we see the Electric Generator and getting some energy this time. Yep, so able to maximize the value from that electric generator. One going to each of the Iron Hands EXs on the bench. This is it from Scott. I mean, it looks like he's going to try and send up the Iron Hands EX for a big attack here. The biggest aspect is whether Fabian is able to find a response with the attack of his own after an Ampu very much there with one prize final for Scott. Well, counter catcher would get it here onto that Mew EX because of the Guard of War EX being able to hit for 190. Yeah. So the Mew EX now a liability in play. And the Drifloon's there anyway. So attach that Bravery Charm to the Drifloon. Enough energy available to take the knockout on the Iron Hands. And that will be game here enough for Fabian. Perfect damage. 240 damage he'll be dealing because of eight damage counters on it. More than enough to take the knockout on the Iron Hands EX. 10 damage additional over to 230 HP it has. And Fabian will be taking game one of round five at EUIC 2024. Wow, just a slow start there for Iron Hands, meaning it wasn't able to get the energy in play needed. You saw how powerful it can be towards the end game once the Iron Hands are powered up. And we'll just see if Scott can try and reset into this next one, mm -hmm. get a Maraidon attack off early and start swinging. But Fabian started with Klefki, the dream start in yep. this matchup. So, you know, things could very easily change going into game two. Yeah, still plenty of time available for this Swiss round five as we do get a chance to recap ourselves what's happened in that game one. Bit of a slow start for Scott after those prizes there. 
And then it was swinging away by Fabian with that guard of IEX and utilizing Screamtail. All of the attackers that were in Fabian's deck was kind of utilized to great effect. Yeah, so it's almost like a box deck now of, of uh, <laughs> psychic attackers that work with that guard of IEX. And there we saw the Curlier being removed from play. That was almost a huge turn there because when that Iono for down to two hit, Fabian was struggling to draw but found their way out of it and the back and forth eventually fell in Fabian's favor. Yeah, great uses of those additional HP boosting tool cards as well, that Bravery Charm and that uh, fantastic Ace spec that we've just seen now, that Hero's Cape coming into play and really sort of helping Fabian stretch over the damage. HP um, to overcome Scott's Pokemon. Tool cards in the format right now could be some of the most powerful parts of every deck. Mm -hmm. Increasing HP, increasing power, retaining energy, you know, everything about the format revolves around these tool cards. Also A specs, also draw engines, and those prize cards seem to show a little bit of those too. Yeah, not ideal here from Fabian's side of the board. Double Curlier being prized will hurt that sort of consistency of the deck. Prime Catcher from Scott's side is going to be a bit annoying to work with as well as we do kick things off for this game two of this round five here. And Scott once again going first. So the flutter main start this time. <laughs> An amazing start in a lot of matches, mm -hmm. but not this particular one, uh, as the only ability that we see from Scott is really going to be on the on the bench with that Iron Crown. I guess the Mu EX as well, the restart. But again, typically on the bench. Fluttermain only affecting the active. With that Midnight Fluttering ability. Uh, very well called there. We do see the Nest Ball for that Moridon onto the bench. Looks like now it's just a pass over after that Nest Ball. So Fabian does get a chance to, again, do his due diligence. Work out what's been prized, what's available for him. That Buddy Buddy Poffin will now allow him to get out some of those routes that are available and maybe look to utilize Fluttermane as the Klefki in this, in this game where it could just evolve up to maybe some of those curliers that aren't prized. I'm, I'm intrigued to see whether we uh, get a Klefki into the active. Uh, is it possible? There is an energy, so it would be possible. Uh, that could be a great way to reduce the, the speed at which Scott bursts through the guard of our deck. Just thinking about Fabian's deck, Fabian's guard of our deck here, Bench space is definitely really quite vital to manage because of the different sort of disruptive Pokemon like the Fluttermane or the Klefki or the Mimikyu if it does suddenly come down as well. And then the Radiant Greninja for draw. It, it's very much a very different build to how we've seen Gardevoir in formats past. And that uh, Technical Machine Evolution uh, was theorized to be part of previous Gardevoir lists. Uh, but it's so, so important in this format where you need to be able to get set up quickly. And in this particular deck, it allows you to evolve into those curlier a few turns earlier than you would normally expect. And uh, then you can evolve them the next turn straight away. So no rare candies appearing yeah. in the list, allowing you to just go up through that technical machine evolution. Yeah, choosing the two of the routes which don't have the memory skip attack as well, leaving that as an option later if... Scott is able to maybe utilize something like an Ampy very much or even that peak acceleration attack from the Moridon and just kind of give himself another additional turn. We saw how vital it was at times uh, to be able to do so as an Arvin is played down here uh, by Scott. Can we just take a moment to appreciate Arvin? Arvin is a key part of so many mm -hmm. top decks currently. You know, Charizard EX playing three or four of them. The Iron Hands were relying so heavily on Arvin in those early turns to get that Maraidon attack off. We just saw how important it was for Fabian here. Arvin has really come in so key into all these decks just because of that tool card yep. uh, being a big part of most of these decks. If you can find tools off of it, if you can find your ball search with Buddy Buddy Poffin, mm -hmm. it's changed the way these setup decks work completely. Yeah, Arvin has come in clutch with a lot of decks sort of in the previous format and this one, of course. You know, I think when it first came out, it wasn't the most utilized supporter because it was only kind of grabbing some of those seal stones um, to kind of support it. But Forest Seal Stone is a great card. Being able to grab an Arvin to then Forest Seal for any cards you'd like, incredible, right? But now with all these A specs as tool cards and all of these like support tool cards that you also get from the ancient box decks and the future box decks, it just gives it a great opportunity here 
um, to be able to do so. And we just did, did get confirmation oh, yeah. that, of course, the Iron Crown does increase the damage output because it's just the active Pokemon where the ability is shut down by Fluttermane. But only one Iron Hand's in play here. So if that screen tail can be set up by Fabian, a knockout on the benched Iron Hands could completely disrupt Scott's plans. And we'll see what Fabian can put off here. Lots of draws still available, some great cards in hand. It's now on Fabian to try and answer that early setup turn for Scott. Yeah, maximum of those two refinements and maybe that Nestle could grab a Radiant Greninja as well. I don't believe that was prized. So that's going to be the draw power available to Fabian as there is an Arvin from his own side of the board here. Maybe eyeing up exactly what you're calling out there, Mike. A potential to retaliate if he has a Nest Ball and the Irvin Fessel. That's an instant draw of number two cards. Was it prize? Was the screen tail maybe prize? Is that why? Oh. Maybe that's uh, completely changed this turn. Yeah, that's definitely an option there. We do take the Bravery Charm and the Irvin Fessel. Well, that is a tough prize to have in this situation. Alongside two Curliers as well. That would be the dream attacker right now. Yeah, not ideal to always utilize the Drifloon. It's one of those kind of, again, closers in the deck to be able to take massive damage knockouts. We see the Airy teched in to the guard of our list as well. Not particularly useful in this matchup. <laughs> Very few items sticking around uh, in Scott's hand that are actually uh, worth getting out of their hand. But this is the stage where we look to see what the plan is. Drifloon plus counter capture could maybe be the, the strategy here, but that Iron Hand is the only uh, threat on the board, the only thing that can take a knockout here. Uh, that Maridon, you're not too fussed about it. No, not at all. So we do see the second refinement here as well. Ultra Ball eye being eyed up for that God of our EX as it evolves up and now is capable to utilize Psychic Embrace. Wonder which direction Fabian would look to try and go for here. We didn't get a chance to really see which cards Scott take, took from the prizes there from the first knockout as the Drifloon also hits the bench now. Could we see it happen again? Well, I think I saw a counter catcher in Fabian's hand. Plenty of energy has been discarded. So this Drifloon should be able to reach the damage output required. Counter catcher, oh, Iron Hands. Big. Three lightning energy attached to it. So this will completely slow down Scott's game plan as the four energy are attached. Not so much about the energy, it's that eight damage counters times 30, which will do 240 damage to that Iron Hand, taking a huge knockout. And the double curly is taken from the prizes as well, so draw power will continue to be utilized from Fabian's side of the board here, as Scott just has the Maridon in the active spot. There's the Iron Hands, one turn too late, unfortunately. Energy attachment there as well, with an Arvin played once again, no disruption available. They're just checking some things out here again. And the, uh, the, this is the, the stage where Scott needs to stabilize again. Game one, we saw how scary it was with Iron Hands in the late game, a stable board state and an Iron O. But as you mentioned, the Curliers, you know, if there's four Curlier on board, the Iron O is not going to scratch the, the Guard of our mm -hmm. deck's plan. So Fabian in a much stronger position this time, and that Arvin will really try and bring all the best options to the table as we see that Mew EX come down again as a potential extra attacker in the matchup. Yeah, mainly utilized for that fantastic restart ability, able to draw your hand up to three. Right now, down to two. One's a tool card that's being placed on the Iron Hands EX as well. That final card, is it playable to restart for more or is it just a restart for additional two cards here? I mean, maybe knocking out the Curlier is more important at this stage than the Drifloon. I wonder what the strategy here is going to be. Yeah, going for that Curlier. Well, no, an advantage of the Mew is you can free retreat back into whatever you want. Yeah, another great way of... Another great just sort of ability of the Mew EX having free retreat cost as well. So it can just maneuver around as he just goes straight back into the Maridon here. And that peak acceleration will be taking the knockout. Trying to slow down Fabian's board, but just not for him to know that two Curlies were taken from the prizes last turn. Yeah, that those were the dream prize cards, yeah, weren't they? pretty ideal. Especially with the, the Drifloon being able to just go back into the active and take another knockout. And at this stage, it's going to be, can you find the gust option you need to take out this next Iron Hands? There is a heavy baton on it. Um, where would that go, though? That's the other question. You know, yep. there's not another Iron Hands to send it to. And... 
It's still another two prize knockout. So a huge turn here for Fabian if they can find the boss. Yeah, just the one boss available in the deck. Does play free counter catcher, but of course that is not activated or live right now because of the equal prizes that are remaining for both players. So Fabian, how are you gonna navigate this turn? Won't be a boss this turn. Drift Loon in the active spot will be just swinging away, it feels like, at the active Maraidon, unless Fabian, unfortunately, without access to something like that Screamtail, can't really try and take out something else. So this is sort of that swing turn for Scott. We mentioned about how uh, the Gardevoir deck doesn't dig as deep through the deck early on as it used to. Um, so Fabian not able to get exactly what they need in these mid-game to end-game turns. And instead, we'll have to just try and stabilize the board to be able to get a knockout next turn, potentially. Yeah, so what's the best way of dealing with this right now? Is there ever a world where you pass and then you're just kind of focusing on two prize knockouts? Maybe retreat into the Guard of Ori X and knock out with that instead. Makes it a little bit more difficult. Mimikyu has come down now. Opportunity to, again, just to buy turns, right? Because then if Scott does take a knockout in some way, shape, or form, all those, cut, all those counter catches are live once again. And you can just kind of keep swinging. But yeah, it looks like you're right. The direction is going into the Guard of EX. Love it. Absolutely love it. Fabian, a great player. Great minds think alike. <laughs> Any <laughs> opportunity for you to say that, <laughs> I, I mean, it is out of range there, right? With uh, 250 hit points. Yep, so right now arm press doing 220. Have a baton currently on it, so isn't able to utilize that other fantastic tool that usually it might use to kind of further boost up the damage output, future booster energy capsule. Not just giving it no retreat, but does allow future Pokemon to deal an extra 20 damage as well. So even with an extra Iron Crown EX, not enough. And that Mew EX now in play, so a Guard of War EX could take a knockout on the Mew, and like you said, with the prize cards, the counter catchers are super key in this matchup. Both sides relying on counter catchers on those key turns. Uh, so now that knockout from Fabian um, does activate the potential for a counter catcher from Scott. Just a grab of another Iron Hands EX there from uh, that fantastic item that we get a chance to use, Techno Radar. Another great future consistency card. Well, you know, all of the evolving decks got Buddy Buddy Poffin, uh, where the Battle VIP pass was gone. And for the future decks, they had Techno Raider already. Counter Catcher available as well, targeting the other Curlier now. Free retreat from the Mew EX after a restart for one. Great little spot he finds himself in, because this will be another two prizes taken. Fabian can't take three prizes in one turn. Baton available on that Iron Hands EX, could power up the second one. He's in a good spot, Mike. He's in a good spot. Very strong, yeah. Heavy Baton is such a key tool in this matchup. I think a lot of people uh, really like the Lost Vacuum in the format. Now, one of the biggest matchups is this one. If you can Lost Vacuum the Heavy Baton away, you often just win the game there and then, as it just retains so much energy in play for Iron Hands, and you can quickly power up the next one with maybe just one attachment. And there's a Professor's Research as well, just pitching away at Iono. Couple of tenor radars, good energies. I mean, just keep swinging away that future booster capsule as well to kind of just have another pivot free retreat. I mean, has the Mew, so maybe not as important right now. Could be useful for the damage output, maybe on the other iron hands. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, Scott's the one playing this deck. Has another techno radar. Hits the discard or two, I should say, after pitching one away. Thin that deck down. Finning is winning. Especially with I know about. <laughs> Just the Maraidon going to hand now. It's going to be focusing on those Iron Hands EX, I'd like to think. Try and utilize those to steal away those final four prizes from those little non EX or non V Pokemon. I love how Scott has been targeting, targeting down the Curlier. Really uh, shows the quality of a player when they start taking out the draw engine. It can be so key in those final turns. Once the Ino does hit, you've taken away their only ways out of the situation. Final two prizes remaining for Scott there. Scott will be eyeing up those single prizes on the bench from Fabian's sides. 
Will there be a way from Fabian to retaliate? Is there a way to deal with the heavy baton? I can't quite see one right now. But it does mean Scott would have to find something like the boss's orders. I mean, is the Mimikyu the plan here? Do you put the Mimikyu in the active and just say, you can't knock anything out? Like, yep. I guess the, the Mu EX would eventually get powered up. <laughs> or just enough turns to wait for the boss, I guess. Yeah, there is, uh, there, there is some list without boss, but on this occasion, there's two boss. Mm -hmm. uh, one was discarded earlier. Yep. Yeah, that's very true. So if you saw one boss discarded, you might think, oh, you know, Iron Hands only ever plays one. So you might be looking to get away with that. Counter Catcher does have the Scream Tail. That was taken off the prizes, it looks like, as well. Can start trying to utilize that as an attacker with something else trapped. Ooh, the yeah. Professor Turo scenario. A great card to be able to reset the, uh, the tool, reset the, the, the damage, reset the energy, um, discarding all of those off the board, and then you've, you've got that energy back for another attacker, and it's gonna be the Scream Tail just looking to try and disrupt in these final turns, and that's where holding on to a future boost energy capsule can be key in these final moments. There's the big knockout there as well, because it's not in the active spot. Doesn't activate the heavy baton, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, wow. So something there we just had to pick up on because of that scream tail, just being able to stick 120 damage on itself with that hero, hero's cape. And advantage Fabian here. Oh, so back and forth game here. What can, what can Scott string together? We'll need to hit two big generators. I mean, what, what's, what's the, the plan here? You, you've just attached to the Iron Hands, so now you can't use that Maridon attack. So you're hoping to hit the generators and that's, that's gonna be it, you know? You, I guess your, your, your thought is, if I, if I take the knockout on the screen tail, you'll just be able to return the knockout next turn anyway. So you have to get hit the, the amp you very much here. Yeah, is there, ever, is there a way, in a, is there a world where that Iron Hands EX could be could gust up that God of War for the final two prizes and arm press. I think There's the eighty damage on it now. That's true. With three Iron Crowns in play, that would be enough. Yeah. So the gust onto the God of War EX plus two energy would be enough. Doesn't look like the boss is in hand though. Another energy in Iono. So Iono being played. Is this to literally find those generators, right? That's, I guess, a yes. counter catcher plus a generator. So two cards. Would have, I would have seen it instantly slammed, surely, but I, has he used restart yet? The heavy ball being played now. Iron Crown EX is a card that could be taken, but is it necessary? I guess you want the, the more draw with the Mew, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, final moments here for Scott, really trying to find the dream combo. It's going to be tough to do, but off the Mu EX, drawing two, needs a generator and doesn't hit it. That's a boss and an energy. And that scream tail on board with the hero's cape is just going to be too much for Scott. Yeah, I and mean, it's just a pass over, or well, I think discussing it, it's just a pass over to Fabian. And Fabian could target down any Pokemon on Scott's side, and Fabian will be taking round five here at EUIC 2024. Fantastic play, fantastic pilot of Gardevoir EX once again. Everyone thought Gardevoir EX was gone, but a lot of the top players have come out here and have shown us that you can revamp the deck, put in those disruptive cards. There's so many good psychic attackers mm -hmm. that can work synergistically with the Gardevoir EX, and I think the real MVP there was that uh, Scream Tail, showing that you can not only disrupt what's in the active, try and slow them down, but you can get around the heavy baton. I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah, it, it was a great bit of play there by Fabian, recognizing that obviously it's not activated if you're taking the knockout of the Iron Hands EX on the bench with it attached. We do see a replay of our game two as well. So some awkward prizing initially here from Fabian, but eventually was able to grab that screen tower the prizes, but kicked things off with Scott kind of just taking a bit of a commanding lead. The energies were all over and, and ready to go. But we do see this, again, utilizing those psychic attackers, that Drift Loon being able to deal a load of damage and then Scream Tail to try and clean up towards the end. Well, I mean, we look back to when Iron Hands was so powerful into Guard of War EX and was often winning the matchups for Maridon EX back then. 
But now you can see Gardevoir, a very powerful deck into the Iron Hands archetype. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot going on in that game, and we just sort of see Fabian just utilize, I mean, from the starts that he had, Klefki and Fluttermane, just an opportunity to slow the game down again. We've mentioned it before when we were casting the first couple of rounds that the game's kind of taken a bit of a step back, given opportunities for setup decks like this to be able to just build up its board state and yeah. utilizing those TM evolutions and then just get those curlies into play. It doesn't matter if two are prized. We've got the two others and we can keep going that way. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of a box of small psychic attackers who like damaging themselves. And with all those HP increasing tools, the capes and the uh, the charms all out here trying to help. Drifloon, Screamtail, and even just giving a little bit more bulk to some of those smaller Pokemon when they're in the active. So Klefki coming through, Mimikyu coming yeah. through, Fluttermane. And so we'll see how well that Gardevoir build comes through. It's definitely an overlooked deck. A lot of people yeah. just wrote off Gardevoir and said, you've lost too much good stuff with the rotation, not even going to bother with you. And consequently, it's now rising. And there's a lot of very good players with Gardevoir EX rising to those top tables. Yeah, in everyone's mind, when you're seeing something like the Screamtail and the Drift Loom with additional HP sort of buffs, as it were, from those tools, which are, in a lot of people's mind, easily countered by things like Lost Vacuum, they're like, oh, we've got one in the deck anyways. But sometimes one isn't enough. Sometimes you're using Lost Vacuum to, if you're playing Lost Box, to ramp up your own uh, Lost Engine, as it were, rather than trying to impact your opponent's board state. Because you need to get your board set up first, right? But if you're yeah. being inhibited by something like the Klefki and the Flutter Main as showcased in that, that matchup, I mean, what can you do? Sometimes you just can't do it, deal with it, deal with it really. No, exactly. And having all those options is the key to Pokemon. If you can beat every deck in the format, you're in a very good position. The main thing is consistency, and that's something we know Curlier can do. Refinement's such a good draw engine for the deck and works synergistically with that final Guard of X, which you're already going to be playing the Curliers anyway, so why not draw some more cards on the way? And Fabian piloting it very well, and I think the, the cat's out the bag now. If you see a Guard of X <laughs> opposite you, you've got to think more about the other cards than the Guard of RX itself. Does the Fluttermane counter your deck? Does the Klefki counter your deck? You've got to look at those cards now rather than the big Guard of War lines. Yeah, but we've seen and showcased there from Scott, un unfortunately not as well as maybe he's had from previous rounds, um, but just the power, inherent power of Iron Hands EX just being boosted up by the Iron Crown EX as well. I know there was a couple of other players with a similar record also playing a very s similar deck and also just doing very well. So I'm sure we'll see some of those kind of make it into day two, uh, potentially as well, just because it's, it's a great deck. It's just fast, it hits hard, and it takes additional prizes. Who doesn't love that? I mean, when you're building your deck, you've got to ask, can Iron Hands just completely destroy me? And if the answer is yes, you might need to rethink how your deck works because that that is such a strong, powerful card that can really speed up the win condition of the deck. Uh, there are a few decks out there that are trying to dodge around it, like Lugia V-Star. Yeah. Uh, they're going to be worried about Iron Hands, but you know, water decks now, they, they're going to struggle because yeah. of it. Uh, and of course, things like Luminion V. You know, we're seeing people completely cut Luminion V from their Charizard decks, and one of the reasons will be how much of a liability it is against things like Iron Hands, which feature in some of our top decks, not just in its own uh, future build, but with Shen Pao and with uh, Lost Box having those Iron Hands too. I mean, after five rounds so far today, we've seen so many different decks. We're just kind of showcasing... Ten. Again. Well, yeah. I can name ten. fifteen. Five more. Five <laughs> more, Mike. Just five more and we'll get you there, all right? Um, but yeah, we're just showcasing all of the different kind of archetypes that are available and all of them have an opportunity to win. You won't be able to really find a deck that has great matchups across the board. It just doesn't really happen. Sometimes you just have to play into a field like this and sometimes just say, well, if I have a bad matchup that comes up, it happens. I mean, Charizard, 22.85% of the, mm -hmm. the room. And then Shen Pao, 12 point something percent of mm -hmm. the room. Outside of that, every deck is less than 10%. Yeah. And it quickly goes down to less than 7%, less than 5%. So the, the chances of you playing against one of these decks that you're struggling against is pretty low. So you, and if you do, you can take a few losses, right? That's part of the, the nine rounds of Swiss challenge. Um, but, you know, there'll be people out there telling you stories of how they played their insta-loss five games in a row, and that happens. Yeah, yeah, def definitely <laughs> happened to me many a time. But 
you know, you, you roll with the punches. You have to. This is what you deal with, um, and that's and that's Pokemon because it's such a large field. You never know what you're going to really hit. We, although we say 20 over 22 percent and just under 600 players that are playing Charizard, you're probably going to face one of those, maybe a couple. But the rest of the field can be absolutely anything, right? And it could be the perfect matchups for you to make it all the way into day two and all the way into top eights and and even further. But it just depends what you see on the day. And there, there's some decks that are in the lower percentages, like Guard of Warrior X, which have been forgotten about. And so actually being the lower percentage playing into a room of high percentage uh, meta share, you're the one that no one knows about. And so you can come <laughs> in and start taking those names. So I think Guard of Warrior X is positioned to convert very well from day one to day two. And it's also a deck piloted by very good players as well. And we often see that, don't we, with um, you know decks that are harder to play. Guard of Warrior X with all those different options, quite hard to play. Same thing with Lost Box variants, harder to play. So we tend to see a higher caliber of player take them on for that reason. Yeah, we've just got some news in that. We've got some information as well that it looks like we will actually be going to a game free here. We've got a little bit of uh, information to, to share with everyone on the stream as well. I think just some actions have occurred, unfortunately, um, some unfortunate actions, which meant that uh, we will be tying up the series and we'll be bringing the players back for a final game three. Yeah, well, we mentioned about the judges. Um, judges are a, an important part of the game and they make sure that we keep to the rules. Uh, and so we'll be letting the judges uh, make the right call here and give us exactly what we need. Yeah, we'll get some final confirmation on that um, as it comes in, um, but we'll try and relay whatever information we get because again, we're just kind of showcasing all of these decks. It just so happens that sometimes mistakes happen, um, but I mean, know, it's a high like, pressure field, right? Yeah, things like drawing extra cards happen all the time, not quite realizing what's happened on the board. Uh, an advantage we have on the stream table is we've got lots more eyes than just the two players. We've got the judges there and all you guys at home watching the stream and we can, we can do a little replay analysis if there's anything that we want to <laughs> make sure. And, uh, so that's the advantage here, that we can make make sure the game is played in the fairest way possible. Yeah, but whilst we wait for just a little bit more further confirmation, um, just make sure you guys are continuing to interact with us as well. Make sure that you guys are putting into the chat. We've seen, as Mike's already mentioned, 10 different decks from our five Swiss rounds. Which deck you've enjoyed the most so far? Which deck do you think is going to go the furthest? I mean, we've had our cast of predictions, but it'd be interesting to find out what you guys um, at home also think of the matchups and the decks going forward as well. But yeah, just a little bit of confirmation for you guys. We do have just in the lower thirds, just down below there, just to kind of support what we just mentioned. But a ruling has been applied. Unfortunately, there was an infraction in game one, uh, which meant that the match loss has gone to Fabian um, and Scott has elected it. But I think we have the final little message there. Scott has elected to concede game three and Fabian takes the win. Um, Kudos to Scott if that's if that's the case. Yeah. Yeah, I mean um, the the situation was I, th I think the uh, the players have finished the game and and sometimes as a player when you when you feel like you're already done mm. you're ready to just move on and I think at that stage Scott was like look it's fair you you, you beat me uh, it was just a small mistake and I think I'll give it over to you and that's one of the beauties of the fair play yeah. of Pokemon. Yeah, and, and I've seen and known Scott for quite some time. It's great to see him back in the game again and like I said a lot of kudos to Scott for just kind of recognizing well it was in the probably in a losing position um, and that small additional error or infraction just kind of meant that it won't really impact the, the ending outcome so he's been able to choose to concede the final game uh, I'm sorry I did kind of hype up that we might be going back to a game three and interesting to see God of War in action again but um, Scott's been able to do the very honorable thing uh, and sort of concede. Well, fair play to Fabian, gonna be going on to the next round with a 5-0 record. Yeah, and uh, with, Scott's still in a great position at 4-1, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and it would be amazing if both of them could do well to to make it really far in the tournament, maybe get a rematch, and that would be <laughs> an amazing opportunity. But, you know, Iron Hands, first time we got to see it on stream, there's a lot of people who are on XO, on the top tables yeah. with Iron Hands, where God of War, a lesser known deck, but seems to be rising to the top. I think we've got a few more archetypes. Is there any archetypes you haven't seen yet that you want to have a look at? I mean, my cast of prediction was Giratina V-Star, but very much earring towards lost Giratina V-Star. Um, I really enjoyed the deck because it felt like in the previous format, it had a lot of 50-50s. 
Uh, my honest opinion now, it's probably still kind of kept a lot of those, maybe slightly angled less to maybe 45, 55. But it just means it's always got a chance because of the comeback potential, because of Star Requiem. Lost Impact's just a great attack. And then Maximum Belt, which you've already championed quite a lot as well, just Love to stretch it. over uh, the 330 damage. I'm sure you guys at home are hearing mutterings of who might be playing <laughs> Lost and Giratina, but no sneaky reveals here. We're going to be checking out what you guys have been up to and reveal exactly how you guys are enjoying the event. You know, there's so many people inside the mm -hmm. hall right now who are enjoying themselves, so we'll check out some of your posts on socials. Obviously, get involved using that hashtag play Pokemon. Uh, you can contact us on X and Instagram everywhere, and we're always keeping track of how things are going. Yeah, hashtag play Pokemon or hashtag Pokemon EUIC, I believe, as well. We have Ben Priest here, uh, Benjamin, someone again we know quite well as well, but this is where the fun begins of Pokemon EUIC. Look at that fantastic photo. That's as you walk into the hall. It's a beautiful little uh, walkway, and it does feel like you're going into something truly amazing. Um, so Ben has captured that moment wonderfully here. Yeah, and the international championships is truly an event in itself nowadays as well. I mean, we've mentioned it all again and again and again. 25, over 2,500 Masters Division players in the trading card game. Don't forget about all the other games going on as well. Pokemon Go have hitting records, you know, Pokemon video game, Scarlet and Violet also doing great things. And then, of course, we have Pokemon Unite also alongside us, uh, which is fantastic to see. So international championships are truly spectacle. Wow, and another thing, I've walked around and there's so many people dressing up for the event. Uh, and I think a lot of people are having fun with it. And Guzma ready to go 03 drop at hashtag Pokemon EUIC. I think uh, you've got to be a bit more confident in yourself. You know, yeah. maybe get that prime capture to, to replicate the Guzma yeah, effect. Exactly, I was going to say. <laughs> um, you know, Guzma was so impactful to our meta throughout um, previous formats, of course, and then just kind of coming back in item form. But we hope you are having a great time as well. And hopefully you haven't gone over free drop. Well, maybe it's something we can try and follow and check up as well. But Jack White here, day zero of EUIC at a Pokemon Center pop-up was electric. That giant Pikachu is, is truly something else. I love it how they just couldn't even get it in the picture. It's so <laughs> big. I mean, you have to really stand back if you want to get the whole Pikachu in. Um, but no, this has been more than just a competition. You know, the, we, we got a chance to go to the Pokemon Center yesterday and had a lot of fun going through there. And, and uh, honestly, this, this whole atmosphere in here, everyone coming together for Pokemon has been amazing. But the Pokemon Center has been, like the queues have been constantly yeah. going. So many people wanting to get in there uh, and buy all of the amazing stuff on offer. There are some very big plushies in there. Uh, let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's truly incredible um, just to be able to kind of experience it all. I mean, it's not just about the competitions. Of course, it's a big part in what we are doing here and, and a lot of the players as well. But everything that's going on, we've already seen the Discover Labs that Chip was able to go out and have a little look and interview a couple of people over there as well. But so much going on. And that's truly what makes Pokemon events like these really special. 100%. Well, thank you very much, Jack for sending that one through. And of course, if you guys want to get involved, use that hashtag Pokemon EUIC and let us know what you've been up to. I think as the day goes on, we'll start to find some records out, you know, people <laughs> telling us how they've done and, you know, people sharing their decks that they've managed to cook up for this event. So make sure you keep an eye out on socials to see what people have been playing. Um, but you said, we said 10 decks now yeah. we've shown. We've still got plenty more to go. Um, I reckon we could potentially by the end of the day see 12, 13 different archetypes not your on our 15. first day. Well, I think that would rely quite a lot on how the matchups go at the end. Uh, but we could be seeing like 12, 13 different decks on our first day here in the post-rotation format. Yeah, but make sure you guys are continuing to interact and make sure you let us know what else you guys would like to see, what more of you would like to see as well. I mean, we, we've kind of bobbed and dodged and weaved the Snorlax and control types for the moment. I've seen they... some of them playing each other. <laughs> I want to go watch those tables where Snorlax control meets another Snorlax control. Yeah, it's, I mean, hopefully we will be bringing you your Swiss round six in due course as well. But you're still with us for the time being. Um, of course, we just had round five where we did see that Gardevoir piloted by Fabian Puyol. Did take the win up against Scott Burgess's Iron Hands EX. Just a little reminder for you guys there. Well, uh, Lossa and Giratina. Snorlax to be seen 
I wonder if there's any decks out there that have just not really, they haven't even got a name yet. <laughs> Something that's a bit more interesting. Um, we, we get to scroll through and see what people are playing. Whenever I see a deck that's called Unclassified, I like to click on it, see what's going on in there. Um, and I think a lot of people have got very creative for this event. Um, but then equally, a lot of the top players are, are playing decks that we have known and seen, and they've just made them as consistent as possible. Why is it so important going into a post-rotation format to have these really consistent lists? I mean, just in such a large field as well, you, like we've mentioned, you never know what you're going to be meeting up against. So having your game plan executed every single game as consistently as possible, that's the mindset that a lot of people talk about. I mean, we've, we've both spoken to Tord before, and he's spoken about power cards up against sort of one of those uh, power cards in terms of like additional tool cards in terms of kind of overcoming sort of bosses rises, orders, yeah. bosses orders or consistency cards where it's just getting you into the game like there's opportunity to draw more awakening drum one big example from round one set up an attacker yeah exactly so it's it's these mindsets you gotta have although with tournaments like this as well sometimes some players are thinking well i've got to spike the event i've got to take it down so i've got to play these set cards and just force my way all the way through especially with Charizard EX being projected to be as high a percentage as it was. A lot of people putting in things like Iron Leaves mm -hmm. in preparation for it. Um, you know, there, there are some cards that can be used to, to tech against it, but Eerie yeah. seems to be the versatile card that doesn't just get Charizard, but it also gets Shen Pao, the second most popular deck, trying to find those rare candies and take them out of the hand, maybe even the superior energy retrieval mm -hmm. uh, in the case of the Shen Pao. So uh, some interesting inclusions as one-offs, two-offs in decks to try and take down the top forces. Yeah, I, I, I love watching Eerie being played because I just love seeing the, the moment the opponent's like response, Present. like what is available <laughs> left in my hand. I mean, it's a bit of a throwback. I've played cards like that before. I played Getsis as a supporter where you got a chance to remove I think it was all item cards and a draw for each one of them have been discarded as well. Um, and it's a fantastic way of just gaining information, just knowing what your opponent's doing, but also just impacting their own setup and board stage. So cool, and I love just seeing people's faces. And remember play. to look at the other cards, other than the <laughs> items. Yep. You do get to get Take that note. information, and you can know what you're going to be playing against <laughs> for the rest of the time. But for now, we're going to be taking a little bit of a break. We have round six brewing up in the hall, and they're going to be set up in just a moment. But for now, let's have a breather, and we'll see you in just a moment.